Hi everyone! Welcome to the December version of the WinUI Community Call. I hope that everyone is doing well, everyone's getting ready um, for the holidays. Uh, so today's Community Call is going to be a bit of a kind of a, a chill one, I'll say. Uh, we're calling it a fireside chat version. Uh, what we want to do is spend a lot of time answering your questions and go over a few updates. Um, so yeah, we hope you guys enjoy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started with our PowerPoint, um, a little bit more about the community call. These happen on the third Wednesday of every month at 9 a.m. Pacific, which is 1700 UTC. Hopefully that's accurate. Um, the next call will be on January 20th, 2021. Can't believe next year is already coming. Uh, and you can always reach us in between community calls on GitHub, uh, you know, opening an issue on our GitHub repo or just writing to us on Twitter at Windows UI. Um, we post all of our latest updates there as well. So for today's call, I'm gonna be doing our intro. Uh, Ryan's gonna talk about some updates on 3.0, kind of what that's gonna look like. Um, we'll be talking about the WinUI 2.5 release. Uh, we have JP here from the WinUI team who's gonna be talking about the new Windows Template Studio support for WinUI 3. And then we're gonna do Q&A. So, the grand question, what is WinUI? WinUI is the native UI platform uh, for Windows 10. Uh, it's built for the modern hardware and devices that you're used to using today, and it offers the latest fluent styling. Uh, you can use it to build rich .NET and C++ apps for Windows 10 devices. Um, and it also powers the, wind the Windows and Xbox OS shells um, and many apps and platforms like Xamarin Forms and React Native for Windows, which you might be familiar with. Uh, so WinUI 2 is the second generation of the native UX stack in Windows, and that's built for UWP apps. So WinUI 2 consists of the visual layer and the XAML framework in the OS, and a library of fluent-based controls and styles, and you will see us ship updates to the WinUI 2 library trimesterly. Uh, WinUI 3 is the new third generation, generation of this native UX stack, uh, it's currently in preview. We released preview three last month in November. Uh, so WinUI 3 consolidates the UX technologies that were previously built into Windows into a single decoupled framework, um, and it's made available for every type of Windows app. So UWP, your desktop, you can use WinUI 3 to build a modern uh, Windows app. So something that I want to talk about is the WinUI 2.5 release. Um, so we released WinUI 2.5, I believe it was the first week of December. Uh, it's available for everyone to try out. You can get the NuGet package uh, at this link. Um, and this works for UWP apps if you're unfamiliar. Uh, I just went over what WinUI 2 is, but um, all you have to do is put this NuGet package into your UWP app, and then you can start using these cool new controls and features. Uh, so some of the key parts of this release were a new info bar control, uh, determinate state for progress ring, which I know was kind of a lot of requests for that one, so that's cool to see it happen. Uh, something that I helped chip was the footer menu functionality for navigation view, and that feature was actually implemented by a community member, um, Dimitri, so thanks for that. It's awesome to see, you know, community-driven features uh, being put into our releases. Um, we also have a ton of bug fixes as usual. Um, I saw a bunch of bug fixes for navigation view, command bar, teaching tip, radio buttons. So if you've been having issues with any of those controls in particular, um, you might want to take a look at our release notes to see if maybe your bug was fixed. Um, and so we just want to give a huge thanks uh, to everyone that contributed to this release. You know, WinUI 2 is open source. Um, so our community really helps us kind of get these releases out the door by, you know, filing bugs, fixing bugs, feature requests. Uh, implementations of features even and everything in between so a huge thank you to all of you so now I oh I forgot about this slide but <laughs> um, so this slide show us what you're doing with preview 3 so I think you know a lot of people may have some downtime over the holidays where you know maybe you're experimenting with preview 3 or maybe you have been experimenting with preview 3 since it came out um, but we really want to see all the cool apps that you're building with WinUI 3. Um, so the kind of call to action and ask here is, you know, uh, tweet us a link, you know, to your repo or to your some kind of download link. 
uh, at Windows UI, uh, you know, tweet it to us. And we're looking to highlight a few apps in an upcoming blog post. Uh, so if you have a cool app that you built with Preview 3 that you want to show off, that you think would look great, on a WinUI blog post, definitely um, send us over the link because uh, that's something that we're hoping to see. All right, now some updates on WinUI 3.0. I am going to pass this off to Ryan. I'll make the PowerPoint big here. I'm sorry, I know you can't see his picture, but you'll see all of our smiling faces during the Q&A. Um, Ryan, feel free to take over. Yeah, you got it. Um, and uh, hello, everyone. Um, so uh, we're going to keep the updates pretty light for uh, 3.0 here, um, since this is uh, sort of just like a light community call. But in general, um, 3.0 remains on track. Uh, we're still on track to uh, deliver that in the first half of next year. You can think of 3.0 as something pretty akin to what we released in Preview 3, but stabilized. Um, we're not planning on adding a lot of new functionality to what we had over top of Preview 3. Um, we may have a couple things show up here or there, um, but generally speaking, it's going to be pretty much that Preview 3 uh, feature set, and that will sort of begin the first GA release, stabilized, and then get us on that sort of trimesterly train of three times a year updates um, uh, that we want to uh, get started. Um, when you, I, uh, one, one of the new things that will show up, though, that we weren't able to get into Preview 3 will be um, the various public controls from the WinUI um, 2. Point, what will it be now? Is that going to be 2.5 or maybe 2.6 by then? Um, uh, uh, library of controls. Um, so there will be some new controls that show up there that weren't in Preview 3 um, and uh, maybe a feature or two. But other than that, it's going to be pretty much that set. We won't be open source at that time. I think um, I think it was last month on the community stand-up that we did with Kevin Gallo that we might have mentioned this, but we were sort of trying to um, decide whether or not we were going to focus on open source first or whether we are going to focus on trying to get the 3.0 out. And um, due to the fact that um, we are a little late with 3.0, we really want to get that out the door. We know a lot of people are waiting for it, so the team is focused on that. So we'll we'll uh, we'll turn our attention to open source after we get 3.0 out the door. You can go to the next slide. Yeah, perfect. Uh, uh, that's right. So I let the cat out of the bag already. We're uh, we're we are still on track. Um, we're tracking pretty well for the first half of next year. Um, and so uh, when we have like a specific date to share, I'll share it. I don't um, have anything to share right now, but uh, I'm still looking for the first half of next year. And then. Um, if you want to keep up to date as to like what features um, will be uh, in WinUI 3, you can uh, always be monitoring and tracking our feature roadmap, which you can use that ACA link there. Um, and um, if we have changes to make to it, we will. Um, that's pretty much it. That's sort of what will signal any changes to the plan or direction, both on this community call and at that location as well. Great. Thanks, Ryan, for that update. Uh, sure. Now we will move on to JP, who is going to tell us a little bit about Template Studio. Hey, everyone. Uh, if you don't know me, I joined the October edition of the Community Call to provide some tuning updates for WinUI 3 Preview 3. And now I'm back, and this time I'm going to be talking about Windows Template Studio. And the, the big thing that I want to highlight here is some support for WinUI 3 Preview 3. And what can be expected with this is we currently have WinUI 3 C Sharp desktop templates in our Dev Nightly feed. This is a feed that updates with any dev changes overnight. And it's it's the best way to get our, our latest updates out. It hasn't quite made it out to a release version yet. And for, for what's coming next, you can check out the the Microsoft Windows Template Studio repo for our roadmap, as well as our known issues that we have with this release. And any more updates, you can follow me on Twitter at jpotm to, to see those first. And now I will go ahead and share my screen. Are you able to see it, Anna? Uh, yep, we can see it. 
Cool. So the first thing that I wanted to show before I get into the demo is sort of our, our repository. I know I inserted links to that PowerPoint, but since we can't click on those, I'll just navigate to, to those links instead. So here is the, the landing page for Windows Template Studio. Hey, and GP, sorry to interrupt. Would you mind just zooming in a bit? Sorry. Oh, yeah. It's the Teams window. Everything just gets smaller. That's perfect. Thank you. OK, cool. Uh, for the the prerequisites for running uh, the the WinUI Preview 3 in, a, in our extension could be found there. And it's the, sort of at the very top of the readme be file. And you'll have all the known issues here as well. And to get the, the instructions on how to get the dev nightly feed, you can navigate here to documentation and then installing the extension. And here we can find some more information on how to get the, the nightly and pre-release feeds for Windows Tablet Studio. And now, without further ado, I'll go ahead and get started with the demo. So here in, in the file new project experience, we can see we have Windows Template Studio. And this is, by the way, this is Visual Studio 16.9 Preview 1. And I'm trying to make it as big as possible so you can see it, but I don't think I can zoom in on the screen quite yet. Um, and we have the option here for Windows Template Studio. You can click on that. It'll prompt us to pick an app name. Just change name name. And as soon as we hit create, we'll open up our wizard for Windows Template Studio. And in this wizard, we can get a lot of more options for, for changing changing our app and the way we want to start our project. Currently, this is for WinUI 3 Preview 3, so we don't have a lot of supported options. But for our other templates like WPF and UWP, you'll see a lot more design patterns and frameworks and stuff like that. So right now, we only have the MVVM toolkit as a design pattern. And pages, this is where, this is where we have some, some options for you. We can, we can start our app with a blank page, a settings page, web view, content grid, master detail, data grid, and even a form page. And for, for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to go ahead and create a blank page, a settings page, and also let's do a content grid page. And here, you get a list of the pages that you'll be adding. And you can even add multiple of the same ones. So I could do two blank pages if I really wanted to. But as soon as we hit create, and I, I already have the app created, so I won't actually hit create on this one. But as soon as we hit create, we will get something like this. And this is the generated code that we give templates with our to-do list right here in the task list that tell the developer how, how they can change the code to, to really fit their needs and get started with their app. We're working on documenting this to make it a, a better process for developers since this to-do list currently only provides comments and code and doesn't provide much information as to how this code is actually structured. That's an action item on the team to provide more documentation on that. But the output would be this. We created our blank page, which is seen here. Our content grid page, you can see it's gathering up all the data and showing all the, these icons. And I think my my favorite feature from, from all this would be the settings page. And here it's very visual. You get dark theme support. And you can come to content grid, and everything changes to be with dark theme. And you can change it back to light theme. Now, there is a, there is a known issue with this, um, with persistence that we're currently looking into. But aside from that, we even have the collapsible menu here, and we can navigate back with, with this arrow. And that's everything I had for, for this demo. I can go ahead and stop sharing now. Awesome. Thanks, JP. Um, so yeah, that was really cool. I think the settings page especially is something exciting. I feel like I saw a thread on Twitter or was having a conversation with someone about um, like, oh, you know, do we have like a template for settings or like, it seems like we have a certain look for all settings pages, you know, and I think that Windows Template Studio is a great place to find stuff like that. You know, I want my app to really look like a Windows app or I want a place to really start out, you know, uh, the design of my UI. Um, 
so I think that's awesome. That's really cool to see that it works for Preview 3 now. Uh, so thank you, JP. All right, now it is time for Q&A. Uh, so we have a few, well, not a few, we have quite a few um, questions that came in from GitHub that we'll be answering. And if you all have new questions that came up <laughs> within the past 15 minutes, um, or that come up during the Q&A session, feel free to leave those in the, the live chat comments and we will, you know, get to as many as we can. Uh, so if uh, my coworkers on the WinUI team want to turn video on and we can go into the together mode, uh, then we can start Q&A. All right, now it's just Ryan. So guys, come on. You can you can all be together with me. <laughs> On my way. Am I showing up now, Anna? Uh, not yet. All right, we have JP. Hey, JP. Let's see when we can get a few faces and hopefully turn on together mode. Yeah, I was going to say it's grayed out for me. I can't see together mode here. Uh, there must be like yeah. a minimum threshold you need. I think so. All, All right, right, we have How's Savoy that? looking very festive. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I thought we were doing ugly Christmas sweaters. If it's just me, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is All awesome. Right. I didn't know it was ugly Christmas sweaters, Savoy. <laughs> Definitely left you hanging there. That's okay. I don't mind. It's uh, more for me, I guess. Um, I've, I've got I such a good no sweater, too. I have no idea how that makes sense, but... <laughs> uh, we'll jump right into it to uh, take the attention off my sweater for a moment. Uh, Ryan, we have a question for you fresh from the chat. Martin Anderson is asking, do we have any ETA for the open source code drop? Yeah, um, we. I don't have like a specific like month or so. Um, we're going to focus on 3.0 in the first half of next year. Um, that'll probably eat up most of that half. And then after that, um, we're going to have a set of priorities that we're going to be probably juggling. Open source will be one of them. Um, and so I'm hopeful maybe like second half of next year or something like that is, is hopefully when we'll land it. I think that that's probably a realistic time frame. All right. And so um, we have another question here from uh, Stefan Cole, who's asking, what is the status of WPF in general uh, and in regards of WinUI? And sorry, that's for you, Ryan. Yeah, no problem. Um, generally speaking, like I think of WPF and WinUI as completely separate things. Um, and I've spoken a few times in the past, but it's worth reiterating here that um, WinUI in general, two or three, isn't really meant to like make WPF obsolete or replace it. There will be times and situations when you still want to use WPF, um, WPF is like a beloved framework um, uh, from the .NET community. We intend to continue to invest, a, a, what I would describe as like a, a, a fairly sustaining and minimal amount to WPF, but to keep it going because there are people who need the features of WPF. They're happy with the UX that WPF provides and it's very stable and it's been around a long time. Um, we have intentionally designed WinUI to be a great stepping stone from uh, from something like WPF because there are people who want to have a more modern UI framework. They want to be built on the native UX stack of Windows as that UX stack evolves, and that's what WPF or that's what uh, WinUI provides, and that's what WinUI three specifically will con continue to provide. Um, so um, we are XAML based like WPF. Um, we're trying to reach a reasonable amount of parity with the kinds of features that WPF offered. We probably won't ever have every single feature that WPF had. We'll also have a number of new features that WPF never had. So we are a, a, like a distinct and different framework, but um, we are trying to provide a reasonably familiar um, uh, experience with WinUI so that if you are a WPF developer and you do want something more modern and you want to go and use sort of like the latest, um, coming to WinUI isn't like a strange jump for you, and you can imagine doing that. So I, ho I hope that answers your question. 
please awesome. feel free since, since we have a lot of time for q a here please feel free to add, ask like follow-up questions too um in the chat and maybe we can i can sort of monitor those and try and track those as well all right i uh see a question for mike here uh mike wim is asking can i make a single instance when you desktop work with a mutex and a name pipe uh but that wait, sorry. He said I can make a single instance of WinUI desktop work with Mutex and uh, named pipe, but it's a bit cumbersome. Can we expect guidance here? Uh, I was actually just looking at that recently too. Uh, uh, it's a reasonable thing for us to address in WinUI, but it's not something that we have any plans for now. But uh, there's a single instance approach that you can use in WPF and WinForms examples. This should work in WinUI desktop as well. Awesome. And uh, another question for you, Mike, also from Wim. Uh, how can I get a Toast activation to work with WinUI Desktop? Will that work the same way as in a current Win32 app? The Toast notification should still work the same way. Um, the uh, I think originally they only worked in UWP, but then some support was added for Toast notifications to work outside of it. Uh, in general, in WinUI, we're trying to just be the UI stack and not get in the way of anything that's you know separate from the UI. And so, uh, you know, whatever the support is in desktop should uh, WinUI shouldn't be doing anything to get in the way of it. Still be working the same. Awesome, uh, Anna. A question for you from uh, Nick Lar, who is asking: Are there any options for proper desktop uh, data grid controls in WinUI three? Um, yeah, so the question was desktop? Uh, correct. So what we have right now is the data grid control in the Windows Community Toolkit, which I believe uh, should, I mean, the Windows Community Toolkit supports uh, WinUI 3, so I believe that should work on desktop and UWP apps, but um, I believe that their controls are uh, compatible with, you know, .NET C Sharp apps only. Um, I maybe don't completely quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. Um, so if you're looking for a C++ data grid control, I'm not sure if we currently have anything to offer. Um, data grid is a control that we know is important to a lot of people. Um, and so we have been, you know, looking into building, uh, you know, a C++, uh, like a written in C++ data grid control for WinUI 3. Um, you know, those investigations, those everything related to that is still ongoing. Um, but that's the, the situation for now. Awesome. Thanks, Anna. Uh, Mike, we have another question for you for, uh, from Nicholas Larson, who's asking, uh, any C++ template generation from Windows Template Studio? Question mark. I can answer that one, too. Oh, go for it, JP. Yeah, so that's actually something that we've recently included in the roadmap. Now that we've sort of wrapped up the work with the WinUI C Sharp desktop templates, we're looking into C++ as well. Uh, it's good to note that if the community has any contributions that they would want to see with these templates, that they, they can do so on the repo as well. And the C++ templates would actually be coming next after after the the new year happens and we wrap up all the the work with the c sharp templates awesome thanks jp let me make sure we get a few questions in here from github um let's see uh this one is to ryan or mike uh and Pino is asking in uwp uh you create an apex package but there's also an option to create an uh, EA PPX package. I'm not sure how to say that uh, abbreviation out loud. Oh, and it's, it's an encrypted Apex package uh, that carries MS uh, enterprise encryption. Is something like an encrypted single file EXE package possible with WinUI 3.0 desktop apps? Mike, do you want to field that one? Are you so, familiar with uh, those packages? I, I, I think it's another example of where uh, WinUI shouldn't be doing anything to get in the way. The uh, I've, I haven't played around with the, the encrypted Apex. Uh, I looked at it a little bit, and uh, yeah, it, it, the, the existence support should still work within UI. Um, it, it's, uh, if you have questions about it, though, it's probably a good topic for the reunion repo, uh, project reunion repo, because there's people there that work on it. Awesome. 
All right, let's see uh, what else we have. I see a few are for me, but I haven't even had time to catch up on those. We'll get there. Uh, all right, this one's for Ryan from uh, Nikita Nemkin, who's asking, have you considered the possibility of exposing WinUI to other languages like Python or Java? With the current build and deployment requirements, it uh, looks like it could be pretty tough. Um, we definitely have considered that. I think it's a pretty frequent request that we get. I've, we've had requests for Python, I think also like Dart and other languages, definitely Rust and, and, and a variety of languages that people want us to support. The answer is, yeah, I could see us going that direction at some point. It all just comes down to what do we prioritize first and what is the, where, where would those things fit on the pretty long journey that we're on with WinUI 3? Um, and so we don't have any specific plans to expand um, the languages now. We'll effectively be supporting C++ and C Sharp out the gate. Um, and also, sorry, the effective part is probably JavaScript because um, uh, we're trying to also uh, integrate React Native for Windows on top of uh, uh, WinUI 3 to give us um, sort of like a JavaScript-y um, uh, ability as well. But going beyond those languages, they'll be a thing that we probably get to in time, but we don't have any concrete plans right now. And just a comment on that too, there's the uh, Python prototype, there's the xlang repo in uh, GitHub, and there's a Python prototype there. Uh, you, you know, from when you ask point of view, primarily we're just a bunch of interface, our API is just a bunch of interfaces and they can be projected into languages. And uh, we've got good support for the C++ and C Sharp, and there's a, a prototype for Python that's uh, sitting out in the repo, and I don't know what the status of that is. I know it's a hard problem. Um, where it, the, the, so a lot of the language projection doesn't relate specifically to WinUI. Where it does, in particular, is for the XAML compiler, because for the XAML compiler, we're, we're generating code into, the, into your app, and so that's the, we would need both parts to get extra language support, the language projection and then the XAML compiler work. Awesome. All right, thank you to you both. Uh, a few questions here that are actually have my name on them. Uh, gonna take my best guess at this one. Uh, Sirison is asking, is it possible now or in the future to automate WinUI through com interop? Uh, for example, can Excel, Word, or PowerPoint uh, add-ins use WinUI? Uh, you can automate WinUI via UIA, which is what Narrator and other accessibility technologies use to navigate uh, WinUI apps. Uh, now from Nikita Nemkin, uh, who's asking, will WinUI 3 ever support unpackaged plain .exe uh, desk, uh, desktop applications? Uh, the answer is yes, just not yet. And Ryan, let me know if there's more you want to add there. I think your answer is good. The answer is is yes, it's definitely a goal for us to support uh, unpackaged. Sweet. All right, another one for Mike from Nikita Nemkin, who's asking, it seems that WinUI 3 carries its own copy of Windows Composition. Does it run in process now? What about system-wide DWM integration? Has the development of built-in composition stopped? Uh, no to that last part. Um, yeah, so WinUI is carrying a copy of Composition. Uh, a lot of what is complicated about WinUI, so uh, WinUI, it's got XAML and composition and input in it. Uh, XAML was already an in-app framework, and so uh, from that point of view, a little bit easier to, to uh, ship separately from Windows. Composition and input are harder. They run as a system service and in the kernel. So, uh, you know, a lot of the complexity of WinUI has been in there. Um, so when you're running, uh, when you're IAP, you're running on an improc version of the compositor and some some new improc input, but the uh, the system compositor and DWM is yeah definitely still under active development. Awesome, thanks, Mike. Uh, JP, I have a question for you here. Uh, P uh, PJMLP is asking, going forward, what are the roadmap items uh, that would make WinUI a viable option in regards to tooling, given that those C++ framework pings back on top of uh, the Windows APIs. Sorry, this is, let, let me try this again. Going forward, what are the roadmap items that would make WinUI a viable option uh, in regards to tooling? Given that those C++ framework ping back on top of Windows APIs anyways, 
uh, while offering a .NET Windows form WPF-like developer experience for C++ developers. Uh, if that was a mouthful, I can post it in chat here. No, I, I got it. So uh, I think the with every release that we go with WinUI, uh, sort of the, the biggest one that comes to mind was the one from Preview 2 to Preview 3. We're always looking to improve the developer and the tooling experience that we offer developers. The um, biggest changes that came so far were the support for XAML Hot Reload, Live Visual Tree, Live Property Explorer, and IntelliSense. Those were big developer updates and tooling improvements that came from WinUI 3 Preview 2 to Preview 3. And this can be expected to, to improve as we iterate among the releases of WinUI 3. Awesome. Thanks, JP. Just stalling while I grab some new questions here. All right, I will toss one over to Ryan. Uh, let's see, where'd that go? There we go. All right, Ryan, um, the roadmap mentions updates every four months, uh, but is that set in stone or could some uh, missing features come out earlier, uh, like when they're ready? Definitely the sort of like every four months is more of a guideline than like a hard rule. Um, one of the big advantages that we have in WinUI in general, whether it's uh, the controls library in 2 that we originally created or in WinUI 3, um, by decoupling from the OS, it gives us the flexibility to ship whenever we want to ship. Um, and so there's certainly the possibility and probably the reality that we, we will not always ship exactly every four months. And there may be circumstances where we either have to delay or we ship something earlier. Um, in terms of um, getting features out quickly after 3.0, I suspect that it will take probably four months-ish to get a, a, like a collection of additional things beyond 3.0 that we would ship anyway. So we don't really have any plans to like do like a really fast turnaround after 3.0 and get like a couple features out like a month or two later or something. That's that's I think that's probably unlikely. Um, after 3.0 goes out the door, I think our time is going to be split basically into adding additional features. And there's a few of them that I consider to be pretty painful cuts from 3.0 that we weren't able to that we won't be able to get into that initial one. So we'll want to focus our attention on those, and then probably some amount of attention on open source as well. But uh, yeah, it's not it's not going to be like always exactly four months. That's going to be what we what we what we aim for initially, and then if we have to correct, we can do that. Awesome. All right, Anna, a question for you. Uh, Sirison is asking: There are many new or uh, sorry, there are many controls and new features suggested in the Windows Community Toolkit, but many have been there for months uh, or even years, such as Canvas View, Text Editor. Uh, grid, property grid, ribbon controls, et cetera. Is it possible to, uh, one, identify a roadmap uh, by feature or control as to whether it's likely to be developed for WinUI or the Windows Community Toolkit? Or two, identify at least a plan uh, such as a feature or control parity with WinForms WPF for smaller subset of controls, uh, et cetera. Oh, so the question there was to identify at least a general plan. Or three, if there's uh, no plans for development of features or controls, um, can we have some guidance to build our own? So basically, I think the uh, person is asking uh, if we can get a roadmap that'll say what will be brought to WinUI or the Windows Community Toolkit, uh, a roadmap for WPF, uh, WinForms parity, and then also a list of controls that won't be built uh, so that people can bet on those not coming. Sure. Um, so as of right now, there's no roadmap document that I know of that says, you know, here's what we're bringing in from the toolkit and here's when we're doing it. Um, that's something, you know, we work very closely with the Windows Community Toolkit team to make sure that there's support for WinUI 3 and all of that good stuff. Um, but I'd say for specific roadmap questions like that, I'd actually head over to their repo and ask them about it. Um, one of the great things about the Windows Community Toolkit is that it is open source. Um, and so there are lots of opportunities to kind of, you know, if you, you know, see something that you really want and, um, you ha you want to work on it yourself, you know, you can, and that's really cool. I'm not saying that's how all features should be built, but um, it's just, it's a cool thing to do, you know, if you're really interested in a certain thing. Uh, but in addition to building things, you know, having open source means, um, you know, the ability to easily make feature requests, 
um, and you know file bugs on features and capabilities. So uh, I just think that's an important part of the process. But generally, I'd head over to the Windows Community Toolkit repo for that info. Um, for the WPF and WinForms parity, I think just echoing what Ryan said earlier, you know, it is not necessarily our goal to, you know, replace or have complete parity with WPF. WinUI is a new thing, um, and we're going to have some stuff that WPF doesn't, and WPF has some stuff that WinUI isn't going to have. Um, and I would say the same goes for WinForms. Um, and what was the last part of the question? Uh, a list of controls or features we won't be developing so that people can be better informed on what they'll need to do themselves. Huh. Um, that, I just give the same answer to the roadmap question. Um, yeah, I don't have any kind of, you know, list like that. Uh, I believe there was a part of the question about, you know, building custom controls. Uh, that's something you definitely can do in WinUI if that's something you want to do. I believe we have documentation uh, for doing that in EWPF as well as in a WinUI 3 app. Um, I believe we have some guidance documentation there if that's something you're interested in. Awesome. Thanks, Anna. Uh, we have a question for JP coming from Marcel, who's asking, will WinUI 3 bring new features to the tool chain, uh, such as the XAML compiler? Can we expect compile performance to stay the same or get better, uh, especially cons uh, around C++ uh, slash WinRT? I'm kind of confused on the first part of the question, but as far as uh, the compiler performance goes, that is uh, something that we we are looking into. And I just want to point out that if if there's any specific issues that you're running into, to please go ahead and file the the issue on our GitHub repo. We try to triage often there to like see which items we we need to focus on and prioritize the most. Um, as as I mentioned in the previous answer for tooling and developer experience, something that we will try to improve as we iterate with WinUI 3. Awesome. Thanks, JP. Uh, we have so many questions in chat. It's good to see. I'm, uh, make, I'll make sure to keep trying to get to all the new ones, too. Let's jump back to some from GitHub for a moment. Uh, let's see. We have one here for, um, I'll, I'll ask this to Mike. Uh, Mike, Nicholas Larson is asking, uh, when do we get templating support for WinUI 3 C++? I, this may have been similar to the one I asked earlier. I can't remember now. Let me know if it is. Yeah, I think that's the same one that JP talked about, because I think that was a question about the template studio. Gotcha. Must have been asked twice. Um, <laughs> it's important. Uh, yeah, let's <laughs> see. Uh, so Ryan Alvin Ashcraft is asking, is WinUI UW, uh, slash UWP with .NET 5 part of what's going to be targeted for the second half of uh, 2021? Can you ask that again? Uh, Alvin Ashcraft is asking if uh, UWP WinUI support, uh, supporting .NET 5 is something that we'll target in the second half of next year. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, I think the key part that I wasn't sure that I heard was the UWP part. Yeah. Um, uh, as mentioned, initially, WinUI 3.0 is going to be focused mainly on Win32. We want to add um, uh, the ability for UWP apps to be able to move to WinUI 3 sometime after that. I don't know if we have like a firm time frame for that, but I suspect it will it will be something along the lines of back half of next year, the time that you had mentioned. Perfect. All right. Um... So uh, let's see, who should we send this to? Uh, so I'll direct this to Anna or Mike, not quite sure which way this is going to go yet. Uh, Felix Gerard is asking, we had some problems integrating external applications in UWP with WinUI 3.0, specifically Unity. Uh, do you have any feedback on getting this working, or is there a place I can go for guidance? Uh, no, no concrete feedback. Uh, in terms of going someplace for guidance, the repo is definitely the way to go. <laughs> Perfect. I'm sure. I'm sure that requires some digging. And, and... All right, uh, Ryan. Uh, Martin Anderson is asking us uh, if we can share anything on progress regarding acrylic or reveal at this time. Um, I'm glad you asked the question because earlier when we were talking about the compositor, there was like a like a little bit of elaboration I kind of wanted to give there. So maybe this will give me a chance to give some of the elaboration. Um, but uh, it totally uh, go it, for a long answer here. I have so many questions to catch up on in the chat. 
Okay, perfect. I'll try and buy you some time, Savoy. Uh, maybe Mike Hilbert can help me with this one, too, so that I don't fumble it. Um, but um, to start, uh, acrylic and reveal won't be part of 3.0. We want to tackle those. Pro- th- those are pretty high-priority features for us to tackle post-3.0. It's sort of like a, a set of features that I would call like the ones that really hurt that, that we don't think we can get to in 3.0. They include XAML Islands. They include unpackaged support, which was asked earlier um they include acrylic for example um that's like a you know painful thing that we don't think we can get by 3.0 and so um i would say a lot of our attention is probably going to be focused on those types of features um for something like 3.1 um and so just in terms of like how you can think about the releases that i envision it unfolding kind of like that but the story i wanted to tell too was just a little bit about like how the how we might go and address some, not just like acrylic, but how we might go and address um, even future materials or future compositor effects that we want to go and do. Um, You know, if we had to do another thing like background acrylic, for example, which really requires sort of like the inbox compositor. And so there's this idea that we've been floating around internally that I'm not sure we've talked about on any of these calls that we internally refer to as the switcher. And the idea of this switcher is that we would um, carry um, the uh, compositor uh, with us, just like we do in the previews, um, uh, which is like uh, an an in-app, not system service compositor. But then there might be this switcher logic that allows us to run on the uh, system compositor, if you will, or the like the system service compositor, um, whenever we need to go and do something that requires um, sort of like a system service level effect. Um, and that also could be a thing that happens when we run up level. So if there's something that is introduced into the compositor, um, into the, like the system compositor, and it's a fact that you can only get on a certain version of Windows 10 and above, but not all versions, um, then maybe we could go and tap into that up-level only feature um, of the system compositor and then do some sort of like a thunk when we're running WinUI on previous versions of the OS. And then so we have this like sophisticated switcher logic that allows us to pick which compositor we want to render with. So this, this is starting, it starts to get into like maybe provide a bit of a a window or a view into like why acrylic has been hard and why we've had quite a lot of discussions internally about how, how to best do this, because there's really a pretty fundamental architectural question that we're facing as to like, how do we go and tap into the very latest of the com- compositor, but also be able to do the types of things that system services can do. And this switcher idea is one that we've been floating around um, that we might go and build that sort of gives us the best of all worlds, but would be a complicated piece of machinery to build. Um, I don't know if, if I've said that right, Mike, or if there's anything you need to correct now, but it, hopefully I've got that approximately right. Made sense to me. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, small story about what's happening with the compositor and how we're thinking about it. All right. Uh, I, I made progress. I think I'm almost caught up on questions here. Buy uh, enough time, did I, Savoy? Have I signed them yet? No, so we'll uh, we'll do it live. <laughs> sure. Um, all right, so uh, <laughs> uh, let, let's just try this one. Uh, Mike, uh, Matthew's asking, uh, can we or will we open source uh, DWM? Oh, I, I have no idea the, the plans for open sourcing DWM. Just, uh, uh, just thought I'd ask anyway, no yeah. problem there. The, you know, we've been talking, we've talked on these calls about open sourcing, just to be clear. Uh, the open sourcing that we are working on is the the XAML layer. There's several things in WinUI now, but uh, the the open source effort that we've been working on is in the XAML layer. Gotcha. All right, Anna. Here's an easy question. Um, Andre is asking, where in GitHub are people posting questions? And I think they mean not for this community call in specific, but uh, in terms of getting you know larger yeah. questions answered, such as the the Unity one, for example. Yeah, so if you go to our GitHub repo and there should be a green new issue button somewhere in like the top right corner, you might have to go to the issues tab. 
um, but there should be a button that says new issue. And so what you want to do is open up an issue and I think uh, it'll ask you, you know, what is this issue about? Uh, and there should be a field for either question or discussion. You know, feel free to pick either of those and then you write out a description. And then, you know, I think uh, very frequently, uh, if not every day, our team, you know, triages all of the new issues that come up on that GitHub repo. So, you know, we see it, we assign the correct person to answer your question, and hopefully then we get your answer. Um, and another great thing about open source is if somebody in our very smart Windows developer community already knows the answer, they can also <laughs> give you the answer or they can give you, you know, pointers, things that they've ran into as well. Um, so definitely go to our GitHub repo to post questions. Awesome. Thanks, Anna. Uh, Ryan, do we have any plans on bringing, um, oh, I just had it, uh, WinUI to Visual Studio for Mac? And that's coming from uh, Jasim. Right now, um, WinUI is a Windows only uh, product and probably will remain that way for some time. So I don't think there's any plans that we have there. All right. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Um, so many questions. Uh, I'm not even sure who to direct this to. I'll start with Mike. Uh, maybe someone else will want to pick this one up. Uh, Momo Appa, which I think is an Avatar The Last Airbender reference, hey. is asking, uh, <laughs> when UI3 and Win32 uh, and, and in UWP have very different feels with uh, touchpad scrolling, uh, such as with the precision trackpad. Is this intentional um, or will it be fixed? I think UWP does it better. Um, the, uh, the, that sounds like something good to follow up on. I believe all the, the PTP support is the same in when you, when you are in UWP. So, uh, and with there too as well. So if there's issues there, we should follow up on them. Perfect. And I think I, uh, I, I see what at least looks like the start of an Uno plug here, Ryan. Uh, Jasim is asking, can WinUI apps be deployed as web apps? Uh, will it support <laughs> Linux host or uh, Windows Server only? Oh, that's, that's a uh, web app, not not running in the web. So sorry, Uno's awesome, but this is a different question. S sorry, say it again then, because uh, I. Uh, so they're asking, can WinUI apps be deployed as web apps uh, via Windows Server or uh, Linux host? I don't know if I fully understand how those systems work, so maybe I'm not sure what the, maybe I don't fully understand the question. Sure. Um, Mike, do you Mike, understand what's being asked there? No, I'm not following either. Okay, maybe uh, maybe you could repost the question in, you. I'd like to answer it. Uh, maybe you could repost the question and then I'll understand a little better. Yeah, that's, uh, Jasim, go ahead and try and uh, clarify your question here in chat, or always feel free to post it to our repo, as Anna said earlier. All right. Um, I'll send this one to uh, to Ryan or Anna. Not sure who will want this. Uh, Thomas is asking, are there plans to manage critical bugs that block people's ability to use WinUI 3 previews? Uh, they're referring to number uh, 3680 specifically. I'm not sure which one that is. I think this is more a question around our philosophy with uh, critical bugs moving from preview three to GA. I, I don't mind fielding that one. So um, yeah, I mean, the, a big part of, I, I mentioned earlier that we're probably not gonna be adding a lot of features between preview three and GA, that the that the 3.0 GA is largely just a stabilized version of preview three. And so the key part there is the stabilized part. Um, we wanna fix any and all bugs that we think substantially hamper people like a broad audience of people from trying to use WinUI 3. I'm not familiar with that issue either. I'd need to go and look it up uh, like I'm not familiar with it by number. Um, but if it's a if it is a uh, a bug or an issue that, you know, affects a large group of folks and it's like completely blocking, that's the type of issue we do want to fix um, if if at all possible before we GA. Um, we obviously won't get to every single bug. So there'll be some bugs that just don't make it into that release. Um, but uh, as a general guiding principle, um, we want to fix the highest priority, the worst bugs, the bugs that affects the most people um, in time for that release. Perfect. All right, let's uh, let's jump up and try and grab a few that came from earlier. Uh, here's one for, uh, I'm not 
sure who to send this to. I'll try Mike. Mike, Wim is asking, uh, will using an execution alias be supported in the next release? Um, uh, that's another, I think that's a manifest feature that I don't understand, but I think that's another thing that uh, we knew I shouldn't get in the way from, get in the way of. So, uh, you know, the current capabilities should be the same with WinUI. Perfect. Um, let's see, that one was already asked. Uh, another one for you, Mike, maybe JP. Um, what about Microsoft.toolkit.mvvm support with Windows Template Studio? Will this be added? Yeah, I can go ahead and take over that one. So Thanks, JP. Um, the, the big thing that we're trying to focus on is parity with the current templating offer templating options that WinUI offers. So that would be the rest of the C++ templates as well as UWP, C Sharp. And once we once we get all that worked out, we can look into offering more support for existing frameworks or even, even going back to the other template options that we offer and including more support for those. As I mentioned in the community call, uh, in one of my slides, we have a roadmap that's posted on our GitHub where people can provide feedback on and maybe help us prioritize there. Perfect. All right. So another question for uh, Mike or Ryan, uh, whoever wants to take it. Uh, our friend Fonz is asking, can you tell me more about input validation? The status is now stretch goal. What does that mean? I don't mind taking that one. Um, uh, it's Sorry, I want to make sure I'm unmuted. It looks like I am unmuted. Um, You're good, Ryan. <laughs> OK, perfect. Um, yeah, it's, it, it is just basically that. Um, it's, it's, a, it's functionality that we want to get to. It's not really needed for um, a lot of the customers that we're looking at trying to initially sort of launch with or assembly launch with when we ship a 3.0. And so um, as a result, it's just something that, like it's not work that we've completed. We've done an implementation of input validation, um, but we think that there's some rough edges to it and it needs to be fixed up. So it's the type of thing that goes into the bucket of, well, if it's not 3.0, then it's something that needs to be prioritized post 3.0. And we'll take a look at that for something like a 3.1 and maybe it'll make a 3.1. Awesome. Yeah, just just to, just to add that that uh, you know that there's some functionality there. You can see it in the example. There's a page on the example controls gallery. Um, so hopefully it's 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 pretty close. But yeah, it just it hasn't had enough uh, exercise. All right. So Ryan, this was maybe something you touched on earlier. Uh, feel free to let me know. But John is asking any plans to add acrylic to Win32. Yeah, so we we want to add acrylic to, I'll say we want to add acrylic to WinUI 3, um, and WinUI 3 will work in any type of Windows app, whether it is, uh, our plan is to have it work in any and all types, um, and so the answer is yes, you'll be able to get acrylic in a Win32 app um, when we add acrylic. Uh, that is not on path for 3.0, but I uh, suspect that it would be a 3.1 thing. Perfect. And as we have just a few minutes here, I'm going to try and close down on questions so that we can end on a fun one. So uh, uh, I'll try to keep these quick if we can. Um, Ryan, uh, Broadcast Explorer is asking, can we comment at all on 3D XAML support for UWP or WinUI? The WPF API is very low perf. Um, yeah, I think the the topic of I might not be the best person to answer it. I'm generally speaking. WinUI 3 is probably not going to have a lot of like what I would call framework level 3D APIs, but we do have a bunch of hosting mechanisms that would allow you to do high performance 3D rendering. We have, for example, swap chain panel um, and a number of other controls that will allow you to do hosted 3D rendering. Um, so I would take a look into um, sort of like those hosting options, if that's the type of 3D rendering that you want to do. I'm not as familiar with like bespoke 3D rendering APIs in WPF. Mike, you would probably actually have more history on that and would know about those. Um, if there are some, uh, it's not something that yeah, I there think is about a whole, a lot. There is a whole set of 3D, 3D uh, there's actually a UI element 3D type. And, uh, <laughs> awesome. 
And so, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a complete thing. Uh, and, you know, it can support data binding and everything like that. Amazing. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> it's not something that we've invested in in, in when you yeah. Yeah, it's not really on our radar to put like what I would call like XAML level or framework level um, controls. It's not something that we've discussed internally. I think we largely rely on hosting and for people to be able to do high performance 3D with their own interop. Yeah, and as you said, we added the swap chain panel so support, so you can you can use the D3D APIs there. Yep. No data binding, but. Uh, so Anna. Uh, Jasim is asking uh, how they should choose whether to build a WinUI, EWP, or WinForm app. Uh, do you want to point them to our guidance there? Um, choosing what type of app to build? Yeah. I think that there is, um, you know, Microsoft documentation on choosing on kind of like what app type is right for me. Um, I don't know the exact title, but I would just, you know, um, look up that question, Microsoft Docs, and I'm pretty sure we have a, you know, documentation and guidance on that. Um, but yeah, I'd encourage you to look through the feature set of both platforms, kind of look through the UI and see what matches what you're going for, but also balance that with, you know, uh, if you know, you know, uh, I think it was, the question was WinForms UWP. I think WinForms is a little bit more of like a drag and drop. UWP might be a little bit more heavy on, um, like writing code, so I would just balance it with what you're comfortable with there. But there should be documentation on it. <laughs> yeah, and our uh, website on WinUI will also point out some of the different offerings available for those different technologies. Uh, so Mike, uh, I'll throw you the last question here before we close on a fun one. Um, uh, we, oh, I lost who it's from. Uh, oh, it's right here. Uh, Yoshi is asking, will there ever be C-sharp bindings for DirectX in UWP? Um, can't say. <laughs> it's, it's another one. We're not actually working on that, but I, but uh, uh, it sounds like a, a X and A type thing. But, and I'm not sure if anybody's working on that or not. Awesome. All right, that was quick. Uh, so Ryan, I'll throw you actually, just I will one say, more. I will, say, I will say one thing that uh, there are a few. Uh, one of the APIs right now for uh, exchanging D3D types within the one of the API set, so they can exchange in a, a surface type. So there are some some wrapper types. You're still writing C++ ultimately, but um, there's some uh, a little bit of integration support that's there today. Awesome. All right, so I'll I'll actually save that other one here since we have just a few minutes left. Uh, it looks like we got through all the questions I caught except for about seven ish. Uh, so if we didn't get your question answered, we'll go ahead and hold on to that for January's community call. Uh, otherwise, do feel free to post it to our GitHub, uh, as Anna mentioned, and we'll get you an answer there. Uh, so thanks, everyone, for the great questions. I'll end on a fun one here. Uh, Martin Anderson is asking, what is everyone's uh, holiday tradition or routine that they'd you know like to share? Um, so I'll give us a moment to think about that, Anna. I think you saw the question first, so I'll throw it your way. <laughs> okay. And you know that's uh, that could be a long question, so we'll focus on the favorite uh, tradition here. Sure. Um, I think my favorite tradition. Uh, my my family doesn't celebrate Christmas, but we have a Christmas tradition. Uh, we wake up early and we go to Chinatown and get dim sum at what I think is the best dim sum in New York, um, and then we go to the movies. <laughs> so I love Christmas. Awesome. All right. Uh, Mike is smiling. So, Mike, I'll assume that means you're ready. Uh, you're next. What's your favorite holiday tradition? Oh, I was smiling, but it's OK. <laughs> um, ever since Star Wars 7, we've been making a point to go see a movie on Christmas Day. <laughs> awesome. It must have come out right before, I guess. You know, um, that's uh, that's a good segue for me. I'm I'm wearing my Star Wars ugly Christmas sweater. Uh, for me, my family likes to. Uh, we, we used to try and watch like all of the Star Wars movies every like Christmas break, uh, but now there's just so many. I don't think it's like feasible to get through all of them anymore. There's like just there's more hours of Star Wars than Lord of the Rings, which is becoming problematic. So I think this year we'll have to like pick our favorites or commit to uh, commit to a decade of Star Wars maybe. Um, the Mandalorian also like doesn't help that problem because that's just been like my favorite Star Wars in a long time. 
Uh, but it's definitely Star Wars for me, but also sledding because I'm I'm from the Midwest and you can't uh, can't miss some good sledding hills when you see them. So Ryan, I'll throw it your way next. What's your favorite holiday tradition? Well, it's a fairly recent tradition. It's only been the last few years, but uh, I have a couple. I have two young boys, um, and uh, they're still like young, and you know they look at life in a very exciting way, and. Um, because of my own personal laziness, I don't like putting Christmas lights up very much. So I had uh, some lights installed on my home. They're the, these LED lights that are all done around the house. And they were installed sort of like in a trough. And they're like really neat and nicely done. So I never have to go and install lights anymore. I just like turn them on. But the fun thing that um, we do is uh, every evening during like the Christmas season, I take the boys outside and they get to take turns picking the color of the lights on the house um, because they're LEDs so they can support like the full RGB spectrum. And so some nights my house is like pink and purple um, and other nights it's, uh, you know, it might be like traditional red and green Christmas colors, but they always get to go and select the colors for, for the house. And they just get a huge kick out of that, you know, because they're they're young and little. So that's awesome. All right. I think, JP, uh, you're last year. What's your favorite holiday tradition? I think my favorite, it's, it's a very recent one. I have a, a younger brother and I think for the past three or four holiday seasons we've tried to trick him somehow into having santa claus come into the house with some family member that'll volunteer we use the same costume every year and they'll volunteer to try to come in with the presents but recently actually um last holiday he he caught on to it so i don't think we can fool him for <laughs> many more years to come that's fun awesome all right, everyone. Well, I'll turn it back over to Anna. Thanks again for the great Q&A. We'll be back in January to catch up on any questions we didn't hit here, but always feel welcome to post them on our GitHub for a sooner response as well. Uh, though I think many of us will be out for the next couple of weeks here as we enjoy the holidays and hoping the same to you. So thanks, Anna. I'll turn it back to you. Yeah, uh, thanks so much, Savoy. Um, let me get to our little outro slide here. Um, Thanks everyone for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I hope that everyone has a great holiday season. I uh, hope that everyone, you know, gets to spend time with their family in whatever way that is possible uh, this year. Um, but yeah, thanks for being a great community. And I want to give a big thanks to everyone on the WinUI team as well, who was answering questions and especially huge applause for Savoy, who always just gets through all of these questions um, and presents them to us. So yeah, that's it. All right. Bye, everyone.